guys and welcome to my workbench again. Now this is my Crompton um, which has been sitting there waiting for the last couple of months really I suppose to uh, get finished off. So the project today will be to fit LED lights for controllable root indicator blind colours. Um, what you will need for this little project is some warm white LEDs um, by colours, so they're also red. Some one kilo ohm resistors, solder, soldering iron, heat shrink, some wire. These are helpful. Um, and pretty much, oh, my razor saw, and pretty much that is most of what is needed for doing this job. Now, I bought these LEDs from Express Models, they came in a packet of 12. Oh, that's it, a bicolor LED. Now, the center prong is the common positive. Sorry, no, uh, yeah, common positive. So, all the center wires need to be supplied and we switch the negative legs um, so your auxiliaries will be through there um, this is a an ESU XL sound chip and it has a common positive supply and switching for the negative supplies on the auxiliaries so it's easy sorted um, what we have are three different length legs. I don't know if you can see them there, I'll hold them up a bit closer. We have the center leg, which is the positive, which is the longest leg. And then uh, the next longest leg is the red negative, and the shortest is the white negative. So the plan will be quite simply, I'll just get another LED out of the bag. Is effectively with the shortest wires in the middle for the white, they will be overlapped with each other so that the bodies of the LED pretty much touch. We'll solder those two legs together. Um, luckily for me on this Crompton the two lenses on the end actually fit nicely in the slots provided on the loco um, to indicate in each root indicator. They just need trimming down in length slightly but that's fine this is just a piece of plastic on the end and you can just cut that, file it down, make it clean and it'll do it. Um, I'm going to be using a couple of resistors, one for each end um, because they're cheap, we've got plenty of them so it keeps each end independent rather than joining the two together. So that is all that is required so we'll get on with the first part soldering these two LEDs together. And top tip number one, wooden clothes peg. Um, I have located both LEDs inside the clothes peg and overlapped the short legs which is the white leg. Um, it's easier to do it in this than in these because of the shape of the claws being hollow and everything else like that. So this peg will hold it nice and flat and close together and won't detract or anything from the heat supplied from the soldering iron. And if you cook it with the soldering iron, it doesn't matter. I will then pinch the end of the legs together and hold it in the end there. So now we're ready for soldering. So 
So here we have another top tip. Um, soldering is all about cleanliness. So at all times, keep the tip of your soldering iron clean. Um, have a damp bit of sponge. I've also got some tip refresher, which you can buy in electronic shops to help keep the tip clean. That is important. Um, we're working with speed here because the longer you take to do any joint, the more heat is put into the item that you're working with. So the object is keep it clean and do it fast. So literally a little bit of solder on the tip and flesh it on. And that's it. I'll join two legs together and the ones next to it as well, but we'll just remove that bit of solder. Too much, there we go. So job is done. As quick as that, soldering iron not on for too long because we don't want to cook the LEDs. So now we have one giant LED with five legs. Um, so we can now cut them down because we know which way round they are. Um, tool drawer. So we've now got the centre leg being the positive feed. And then we have, sorry, the centre legs is now the white negative but it'll all come clear when I put the wires on because that is the next job okay so I've now got five shorter legs again I'm going to have to hold it in the peg because what will happen otherwise as soon as I put heat on to attach the wire those centre legs will want to come apart and the LEDs will want to disappear on, on the floor in two individual items. So again we shall now reattach that. <coughs> so white, now for white I'm using orange wire. I've just got this bundle of stuff out of an old car that I had years ago. The wire itself is perfectly serviceable, so it's so we'll start off with a piece of orange wire, strip the end with the square end of the cutters, twist the end together. There's one wire ready. Tin the wire, I might have to turn these fans off because the fan again is blowing around and it's cooling everything. So now the wire has solder on it, again because we're working quickly I'm just going to put another little spot of solder on the end here. Just to make sure it's all tinned. It dripped on my leg. It doesn't help that I'm working at full stretch with my soldering iron because of the plug is on the other side of the room, not this side of the workbench. So now we're just going to touch the wire with the soldering iron. Don't need to add more solder because we have enough. Let it cool. One wire attached. I'm going to peel the solder off my trousers. Watch out for that. Um, 
So yeah, I'm now going to repeat that with two pieces of black, um, yeah, two pieces of black wire, which will be the positive feeds, and on the outside two red wires. So I'm just looking at me other end of the logo so I can keep them all the same. So that is the next job. If you see me do one, I'll do the others off camera. And as I said on the track making video, the track laying video, because the wire and the leg is tinned, when you come to join them together, you don't need to apply more solder, you just need to apply the heat and the solder that is on the leg solder that is on the tip of the iron already and the solder that is on the wire all combine together and make a nice tidy joint clean the tip off so that is now clean the next job now that i have all five wires fitted on is to make sure they don't short out on the chassis so for that heat shrink I've been to the electronic shop in town because the heat shrink that I have is too large. So we're now going for 1.5 mil heat shrink. Cut it into lengths of about inch, inch and a half. So I need five of those for, e for the LED cluster. And this is so they don't short circuit onto the metal chassis. Um, dead easy to fit. Soldering iron is heating up again, so I now have five lengths. Let me just thread it. Down each leg. I did try the ones that I had and it was just too loose when they shrunk as much as they could. So we'll go smaller. ones are tightest because it's got two legs and the wire goes in easy enough on the one and a half mil heat shrink all the, all the legs to the end. Again I'm going to grip it in the peg and hopefully now the soldering iron has warmed up enough that it will sh um, shrink it down. You just need to run gently the iron. Oh, that's much better. So what we now got to do is prepare the mount on the loco. Now what we want is the ends of the LED to rest nicely on that bit, obviously it'll be coming from in the opposite direction but they will sit on there. So we need to trim down these two back lugs and what we'll do then is glue um, the LEDs onto the tops. Now we don't want to cut it all the way down because we need it so it's just slightly lower than the front and for that I shall be using the razor saw. The only reason I'm using the razor saw is because it is quieter than uh, my Dremel and it doesn't produce any heat anywhere or mess. So just a gentle about roughly around there, that's how accurate I am. I'm just going to saw it off. Thank <laughs> you. 
quick as that. Now we'll just check for height. And they sit nice and flush, level with the top. So I haven't got to do anything else except sweep up the, the saw from the filings. Okay, so the very next job is to glue the LEDs on the mounting. So they will sit flush in on there. So I'll hold that in place there and what I will do is bend the back legs down so that they all fold neatly in position there. The middle one is the hardest because it's twice as thick as everything else. But all it has to do is go flat to the floor so that it is below the cap floor height and sit like that. So now I shall get my high strength super glue from wherever it is on the other side of the room and I'll come back. So having got my super strength super glue, I'll just put a couple of spots on top of the parts that we've just sawn off. And I might even just put a couple of spots on the bottom of the legs on the heat shrink. Not really necessary. But and then we shall glue the LEDs in position and wait for them to go off. And I'm not going to let you sit here and watch glue dry. Okay, now that the glue has dried and the LEDs are firmly in place, take the razor saw and cut off the extra part of the LED rod that stick out the end. Some of that glue was still wet. So that the lens is shortened and with my little needle file. If I can find it in the drawer. Bear with me. Actually I'm going to use that they are found them. Wrong one. It's got a flat face. So just gently clean the face of the saw marks with a needle file and then what I'm also going to use is I have one of these little bow file things with the tape, abrasive tape I'll just use that to polish the ends of the LEDs. The smoother it is, the better the light transfer will be. So the end is now smooth and clean and ready. Okay, the next job is to stop the light bleed. Now, these LEDs, the whole end will light up. So, what we need is a bit of black paint. Now, I'm just trying to find something to stir it with. There we go. And 
Okay, so I've got some black paint. And just literally paint the bodies of the LEDs, give them a good coat of paint. The only bit you don't want is the very end painted there. The rest of it, the bodies around the backs, the fronts, the sides, all just needs a little dab of black paint to help slow down the light bleed. Put some underneath and get the brush under there and get some under the, underneath. Any in between. So that should reduce the light bleed from the LEDs. And we'll just leave that to dry. Right, I'm back. It's now the following day because I had to go to work. Um, what I have done is just put a bit of tape on each end to hold the wires nice and flat so when the cap body goes back in and in place it, it sits down where it should do. So what I'm now going to do because I have this jumbled mess of wires um, because I just temporarily connected up the other end as proof of concept I'm now going to just off camera move the speaker out of the way and tidy up some of this wiring so that I can show you what we're doing next. So back shortly. Right now I've tidied up the wiring a bit so it's a little bit less crowded with wires at this end. Um, I've shortened the black wire on this end and fitted the resistor in there under the heat shrink so making two into one. I run the wires for this end the orange and red wires I fed through underneath and there's the orange and there's the red wire because there's a big space underneath what I'm going to do is with the two black wires the common wires from this end the resistor that is here on this one I'm going to fit so it lays underneath because there's a big space under there so I might as well use it instead of trying to cram it all in up here so dead easy we're just going to trim the wires and go, well, we want about there. And with this one as well, about there. I'm going to feed the wires in under there. So we know that they are together. Right, yep, so that will be fine. So if we bring these two wires here together. Strip back with the flat side of the cutters. Twist together. Solder together. resistor, one kilo ohm resistor, shorten the leg a bit, just hold it in here, tin the end of the leg so that has sold on it, clean tip, So I've got a big blob of solder, it doesn't want to come. That's hot. Hot bits, remember hot bits. So the tip is clean. One resistor. I'm going to wrap them together a little bit just to hut so they hold each other together. Hopefully, they'll just hang on there. 
while we solder it. Why make it hard for myself? I've got my extra hands, so we'll just use that. So, clean the tip. Yeah. Tip is tinned. Put it together. And chops are good. Why make it hard? That's why we got these things. So that's one end soldered on to the resistor and we need to extend the wire on this end. Make a loop, that'll do. So we'll just do the square end of the cutters. Strip a bit back. On the other leg, shorten it a bit. Done. What I'll do now is, because we have a metal chassis and we have this great big resistor here, which is uncovered, I'm going to get some of my heat shrink. Just trim the sharp bits off of the leg that's sticking out. Another piece of heat shrink. This time it's a two mil heat shrink. Feed it up the wire. And I noticed from the replay that when I done the heat shrink yesterday, you couldn't see because it was out of shot. So this time you'll get to see. Just clean the soldering iron so there's no solder on it. And just where you got the heat shrink, just slow, gently rub it up and down and round underneath. And around the back. And it all just shrinks down with the heat until it's a nice snug fit. It's not going to fall off. And more importantly, as well as not falling off, it's not going to short out on anything and blow the chip. So, there we go, that is all good. So, now we'll tuck that under the speaker and under the chip. The cavity underneath, we hide the resistor so it's all nice and tidy. So wait, the wires are away from the motor and the flywheel. So they're not going to rub or anything like that. That's good. So we now have four wires. We've got the common from this end to connect. The common from this end to connect and they go in the U plus terminal on the bottom corner right down here so we'll make them about the same sort of length My small screwdriver will open the terminal 
as much as it will go. So quite a, even with this small wire that I'm using, they're still a relatively snug fit with two wires, which was another reason for shortening everything and fitting it only the one wire where necessary. feeds, the common positives are in the terminal. Right, so that's those done and that just leaves the wires for the red and the white lights. Now I've used Auxiliary 1 for the white light at this end and Auxiliary 2 for the red light at this end. So I'm going to use 3 for the white light and 4 for the red light. So it's odds and evens just to try and make it simple to remember. So first off the white light which in this case is the orange wire will be going into Auxiliary 3 which is there. It's a short trim. realise getting a lot of hand in there. So just adjust my position slightly. Three. Loop the wire. And that becomes auxiliary four, which is this terminal here. All right, so hopefully now is it. So all the wires are in, everything is snug, nothing is rubbing on anything else. So I shall remount the speaker on top. Because that also holds all the wires in. Holds the chip down. And we should be ready to put it on the track and test. So I'll be back shortly over on the layout. Okay, so this is the end that I had previously done, uh, which is working on F16 for the white light. And turn F16 off and go to F17 for the red lights. So that's completely switchable. So I'll now move you around to the other end of the loco, which is the pair we've just wired up. And now we have F19 for the white light and F20 for the red light. So I now have fully switchable route indicators for both ends of the logo. And if I sit the LED, um, the route indicator box of the cab over the LEDs and switch them back on again. You see I have the whites and the red. And that transfers up and with the cab on, which I can fit uh, 
you. The battery end is the non compressor end. Slot that on here. There we go. So with F19 is the white light. I've still got to fill in that little round dot so you won't be seen, but for this it's fine. And F20. So I have red and white suitable, and that is how I did it on the other end. So now you can do it on your O gauge 33s if you wish to do so. Not difficult, just a bit fiddly and time consuming, I suppose, but. The effect is well worth it. One other thing that we need to do is these are the optical fiber plastic light bars or whatever that come in the root indicator to illuminate the root indicators. If you look at the top, if you can see it there, oh, I don't know, let's get it in a better position. Can you see there? It's got a short chamfer on the top and what that results in is that because of the way the bar is designed you only get a small reflection across the top which you can just pick out there on the camera. So what I've got to do is elongate the chamfer so I'll just take you over to the bench and we'll do it out there and I'll show you the difference it makes. Okay, the modification is quite simple. I've got my file here on my Leatherman and I'll take the top end of the light strip bar thing and I'll just file the back down. Checking the end, so you've got to try and keep it square. I think that's close enough, so you'll see the change in the shape. If I go that way, you can see it again. See, you can see what I've done there, and what I will also get from my drawer of paints is some silver I don't like silver paint really but it's funny stuff it dries quick I shall get my paintbrush Doesn't need much, but we'll just clean the screwdriver off. And on the back, where I've sanded over, I'll just put a smear of silver. Simple as that. So now, You'll see a more silvery front face compared to original. So what I'll do is take you back to the logo and I'll get, demonstrate the difference between the two at the same time. Okay, so I'll try and demonstrate the difference that makes. If I put this back in front of the LEDs, you'll see that it illuminates a larger area of the modified one than the unmodified one. It's slightly dimmer, but that works in our favour because it's a root indicator blind, not a light that we're looking at. So slightly dimmer is better and it fills the whole rectangle more than the little bit at the top. So that's what we're going for. Um, simple little modification. 
makes a big difference to the light output of the actual indicator. So it's more of a blind than a light. Um, so with it reassembled in the in the loco, it will be much better. So I shall repeat that with the second one, and that's the job done. So if you like the video please by all means click the like button and leave any comments in the comment section below and I'll again as I said previously I'll answer them as soon as I can um, so anyway from Heather Green TMD and O Gauge we'll catch you next time with the next part of a project see ya